On the last episode of Two Wheels, One Compass, we learned of the Lakota chief Sitting Bull's actions fighting in Red Cloud's war against the Northern Pacific Railway and his defeat in the Great Sioux War. He left his lands to the Northwest Territories of Canada to live in exile outside of U.S. jurisdiction. While in Canada, Sitting Bull was met by the Canadian Mounties of the region. The commander of the Northwest Mounted Police, James Morrow Walsh, said that in Canada, Sitting Bull was subject to Canadian law. Both men shared their values of equality and justice in their meeting, and they became lifelong friends. Canada refused to give up Sitting Bull to the U.S., causing tension between the two countries. Also while in Canada, Sitting Bull met with Chief Crowfoot of the Blackfeet tribe. The Cheyenne and Lakota were longtime enemies with the Blackfeet. Sitting Bull and Crowfoot understood the importance of Native American unity in the face of the injustices the U.S. had made against their tribes. Sitting Bull named his son after Crowfoot. His time in Canada turned him from a man of resistance to a man of peace. Unfortunately, hunger and lack of resources forced Sitting Bull and his followers to return to the U.S. to surrender. In 1883, he was allowed to return to the Standing Rock Sioux Reservation. In 1884, Sitting Bull met Annie Oakley in Minnesota. He was so taken by the woman, he thought that she was gifted by supernatural means in order to shoot so accurately with both hands. He symbolically adopted her as a daughter and named her Little Sure Shot, the name that Oakley used throughout her career. In 1885, he was in an attraction called Buffalo Bill's Wild West, a touring attraction where audiences could pay to see reenactments of battles and meet famous icons of the Wild West, such as Sitting Bull. He toured for four months with Buffalo Bill, riding around on horse in front of an audience giving speeches, taking pictures with fans, and educating whites on his ceremonial dresses and Lakota cultural practices. He didn't keep his money either. Most of it was given away to beggars. Upon the completion of the Northern Pacific Railway, the railroad he'd fought against for so many years, he opened a show to Buffalo Bill's audience by cussing in Lakota at them. Apparently the man of peace had an element of defiance still in him. In 1890, the ghost dance movement took Native Americans of all tribes and languages by storm. The popular dance was a spiritual, religious movement that followers believed would force whites from America's shores forever and bring back the buffalo. Sitting Bull, a religious man, allowed ghost dance followers to practice openly at his camp. This movement caused whites to fear natives in many different ways. To prevent Sitting Bull from gaining too much strength, police officers were sent to arrest him. They surrounded his house and led him outside, telling him he needed to check into the local agency and then he'd be allowed to return. Sitting Bull refused to mount his horse. The local Lakota in the area closed in on the police officers, leading to a standoff. A young Dakota by the name of Ketch the Bear fired the first shot at the commanding police officer. The officer fired his weapon upon being hit, shooting Sitting Bull in the chest. Another officer, Red Tomahawk, shot Sitting Bull between the eyes, dropping him to the ground. A close quarters firefight erupted and by the end, Sitting Bull's remains were taken. Sitting Bull's half-brother, Spotted Elk, heard of the death of Sitting Bull and ran his tribe into the Pine Ridge Reservation. He would end up being killed at the Massacre of Wounded Knee, which is seen as the end of the 19th century Native American military campaigns in the United States. A man of resistance and peace, defiance and unity, Sitting Bull knew when to fight and knew when to make peace over the course of his life. I still find it remarkable that such a controversial figure could live so long in the shadow of a powerful country like the United States. Today his legacy is lived out in the memories of Native Americans all over the U.S. The recent controversy of the Dakota Access Pipeline going through the reservation that is his resting place, the Standing Rock Sioux Reservation, has caused a resurgence of his teachings in the public consciousness among protesters and residents who could stand to lose access to clean water in the event of a spill. Native Americans, historically and today, continue to fight against powers greater than themselves in order to keep what is theirs by right. The memory and teachings of Sitting Bull represent that defiance even today, over 125 years after his death. Oh man, one word to describe that last hour was uh, grueling. We're going up and down and up and down, seemingly endless, endless hills. I mean, I can be as positive as I want about experiences and try to stray from the negative, but it was boring. <laughs> there was no, no scenery change. I mean, eventually it went from just straight on horizons to horizons to eventual hills. It actually got better, but then after, after that, you're just like, when's the, when's the next damn town? So we've arrived at Newell, 
a small town, but it's still an hour out of Deadwood where we're going to be staying. So the plan is, is I'm going to be staying with my folks in a hotel for the first one, first night for a jump off point. Because that way, there's, you don't have to rebuild or break camp and move. So it'll just be get up and go. It's currently six, probably gonna get there at seven, which is actually a really good time. We left at about 6.30, so with the breaks that we've had in between, all the fill-ups, um, we're probably waiting on dinner until we get there. But I had to start singing to myself to wake myself up. I was getting bored fighting the wind. I went back and forth just trying to wake myself up. And I sang and then eventually at one point I saw the Black Hills. I started seeing them and I was like, holy shit, finally. <laughs> and every time that we get off the things and stretch, it's just like, that's another half hour of just tolerance really, where we can actually do this. The other half hour is, <laughs> is bitching, really.